Hello everyone, this is Noble H. Mushtack, and today we are here with another American Legion's Mathematics League problem. We're going to do a problem from 2017, the individual round, and problem number 8, which tends to be one of the harder problems. This is a very unique problem because it combines a lot of geometry theorems all into one pretty cool problem. Here is the problem statement, which I've turned into a bulleted list to make it easier to read. The first point is that in triangle ABC, angle C is a right angle and BC is 17, so this is a right triangle with one of the legs equaling 17. Then point E lies on side BC such that angle CAE is congruent to angle EAB. This is kind of hard to understand if you don't make a drawing first, so I'll show you a diagram later. Just, just keep this in mind. And then the circumcircle of triangle ABE passes through a point F on AC. So remember, ABE is some triangle, and the circumcircle is the circle that goes around all the vertexes of that triangle. So the circle will go through A, B, E, A, B, and E, and then it'll intersect AC at some point F. Now, given that CF equals 3, try to find AB. So this is pretty confusing, but it's easier if you draw a diagram, like I've shown here. So remember, the first point was that this is a right triangle with leg 17. So here I've drawn BC, and it has length 17, but I've slid it up into X and 17 minus X, because there's this point E here. And then I've drawn the line AE to make it more clear what this is doing. Because remember, EAB is going to go into CAE. So now from this diagram, we can see that E is actually bisecting the angle BAC. So AE is an angle bisector. Then finally, we have the circumcircle, which goes through A, B, and E. And you can kind of see we have two secant lines, A, C, and B, C. And the last point they said was that C, F equals 3. So this is kind of a complicated diagram, but let's break it down to see what theorems we can use. The first thing you should notice is that this is a right triangle, so we can use Pythagorean theorem. The second thing you can notice is that, as I've said, there are secant lines right here, so we can use secant secant theorem. And then the last thing you should notice is that there's an angle bisector, and so you can use angle bisector theorem. And angle bisector theorem, I feel like, is forgotten a lot, but it's really important to remember, especially for this problem. And then finally, remember, I've labeled CE as X, just to be clear. EB is 17 minus X, since BC is 17. And then AF is Y, although unfortunately it's hard to see here. But AF is Y. And then AB is Z. So we are trying to solve for Z. After all of these theorems, we are going to solve for whatever Z is. So first, just use the Pythagorean theorem, and we get this simple equation, which is not very helpful at all. 17 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals z squared. Clearly, we cannot solve for z here, but if we get y plus 3 somehow in terms of z, then we would be able to solve for z. So our whole goal with the next two theorems is to solve for y plus 3 in terms of z. Then, we're going to use secant secant theorem, but just to make this clear, let's go back to the diagram. Secant secant theorem tells us that the outside, which is 3, times the whole, which is y plus 3. So 3 times y plus 3 equals the outside, which is x, times the whole, which is 17. So just to recap, 3 times y plus 3 equals x times 17. And that's what secant secant theorem tells us. So y plus 3 times 3 equals 17x. We can then get this into a cool proportion by dividing this by 3x. So you get y plus 3 over x equals 17 thirds. Solve for y plus 3, and we have y plus 3 is 17 thirds x. This is not quite what we wanted. Remember, to solve for z, we need to get y plus 3 in terms of z. However, by solving for y plus 3 in terms of x, we've gotten at least one step closer to getting it in terms of z. Now, remember the last theorem I mentioned was angle bisector theorem. Now, going back to the diagram, Angle bisector theorem tells us that AC right here, which is y plus 3, in proportion to EC, which is kind of this outside x right here, is the same proportion as AB, which is z, in proportion to BE, which is this outside 17 minus x right here. So if we go back to the equation, I've written z over 17 minus x, which was z was one of the legs, and 17 minus x was part of one of the legs. 
sorry, sides. Z was the hypotenuse, but it's still one of the sides. And then y plus 3 was also one of the sides. And then x was the other part of BC, the other part of that side. So angle bisector theorem tells us that this proportion is true. And then earlier, we found that y plus 3 over x equals 17 thirds. So I've also written that on the right. So at this point, I'm going to ignore the middle here and just focus on the fact that z over 17 minus x equals 17 thirds. Then we can obviously solve for z by multiplying by 17 minus x. So you get z equals 17 thirds times 17 minus x. Now multiply by 3 17 to get 17 minus x equals 3 17 x, and then subtract both sides from 17 to get x equals 17 minus 3 17 z. Again, this E equation on the right just comes from solving x on this equation from the left, and you can do that yourself in order to check that these two equations are equivalent. Now, after all this, we've used the angle bisector theorem to solve for x in terms of z. Now, why did we do that? Since we wanted to solve for y plus 3 in terms of z, didn't we? Well, earlier, we solved for y plus 3 in terms of x, and now we have x in terms of z. So with those two equations, we can substitute and solve for y plus 3 in terms of z. So y plus 3 equals 17 thirds x, which we found earlier, which is 17 thirds times 17 minus 3 17 z. Now multiply this set fraction into this binomial, and we get y plus 3 equals 17 squared over 3 minus z. And then we want to make it an improper fraction because in general, improper fractions are easier to deal with. So we have y plus 3 is 17 squared minus 3z all over 3. Now, you might notice that 17 squared, I didn't simplify that, and the reason I didn't simplify that is because I don't want to do any extra work that I don't have to, so this 17 squared, it might cancel out some point in the future, hint hint, so I'm not going to multiply 17 times 17 out quite just yet. So, to recap, y plus 3 is 17 squared minus 3z all over 3. With that, we can go back to the Pythagorean theorem and substitute this value in for y plus 3. So now we have 17 squared plus, in parentheses, 17 squared minus 3z all over 3 squared equals z squared. This is very complicated, especially because there's a fraction, but it turns out we can multiply both sides by 3 squared in order to get rid of that fraction. So we're left with 3 times 17 squared plus 17 squared minus 3z in parentheses squared equals 3z in parentheses squared. Again, I haven't simplified 3 times 17 because this 17 might cancel out with another 17 somewhere, hint hint, so I'm not going to do any extra work and multiply 3 times 17 yet. Now, we have this equation, and what I've done in the first step is subtract 17 minus 3z squared on both sides, so now 17 squared minus 3z squared is on the right side instead of the left side. The reason I did that is because we now have difference of perfect squares on the right hand side here. So it's something squared minus something squared. So we can use the formula a squared minus b squared equals a plus b, a minus b. So this becomes 3z plus 17 squared minus 3z, and then 3z minus 17 squared plus 3z. Because the negatives, remember, minus and negative is positive, so this becomes plus 3z. Simplifying this, these two terms right here, this first the trinomial just becomes 17 squared, and the second trinomial becomes 6z minus 17 squared. So now, in to recap, we have 3 times 17 in parentheses squared equals 17 squared times 6z minus 17 squared, and that came from doing different of perfect squares to the right hand side here. Now, as you can see, we have 17 squared on one side, and we have 3 squared times 17 squared on the other side. So we can cancel out these 17 squareds, and that leaves us with 3 squared equals 60 minus 17 squared. And now we've gotten, from this very complicated equation with a fraction under a square and whatnot, to this very simple equation that's just a linear equation in terms of z. So now simplify 3 squared and 17 squared to get 9 equals 6z minus 289. Add 289 to both sides, and we have 6z equals 298. Divide both sides by 2. 3z equals 149. Finally, z equals 149 over 3. So to recap, from this diagram, we used three different equations, Pyth Pythagorean theorem, angle bisector theorem, and secant secant theorem, in order to solve for the hypotenuse here, which was which we said was z, and we finally found ab, that hypotenuse, to be 149 all over 3. I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you learned some strategies both for solving geometry problems that have a lot of theorems in them, and also for kind of solving 
complex equations that look very hard, but in the end just turn out to be pretty simple once you use some tricks. So again, I hope you learned a lot and have fun doing math.